Hello, my name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. This is a part two of a three-part series on Spark AR and how to make Facebook effects. Last week I talked about what effects were, what is Spark AR, and we did our first tutorial together. Now I'm gonna pick up right where we left off. If you missed the last video, I will link to it below and I recommend watching that video first before this video because in this video we're going to jump in right where we started we did quick start lab number one in this video now i'm going to click on quick start lab number two and that's what we're going to accomplish in this video and now you can see my lab one and this is what we accomplished in the first lab we created a face mesh and then we can, we adjusted the surface parameters and then we put it on our smartphone and we were able to see it on our own faces on our smartphone so now let's jump into number two Two. number lab number two is putting a background so right now she's got a very plain background and let's see if we can uh, differentiate between her head her hair and the background behind her we're gonna keep her up there and what we're gonna do is create a 2d canvas all right so from uh, spark AR I'm gonna right click and I'm going to add a canvas there we go so now I've got canvas zero and then I'm gonna right click inside canvas zero and I'm gonna insert a rectangle now there is a rectangle on top of her face excellent that's what we're going for and once you once again you see that checkerboard pattern and that means that there's nothing there that you, they're looking for you to put a material there or something to make it make some sort of sense I have rectangle zero highlighted which means that over on the right hand side in the inspector panel I'm working on rectangle zero and from the view menu I'm gonna open the patch editor okay mine's already open but if but if you were like this then you would hit view patch editor and it would be right there all right I've opened the patch editor and now I'm going to create a new material for my rectangle default material is zero that was for her face and you can actually change these if you want so let's do face that was her face okay just so that you can remember what is what and then I am now going to click on rectangle zero inspector panel I'm going to hit this plus button next to material I'm going to create a new material because this is no longer her face this is going to be the background and it's created it's created a new material called default material zero rectangle zero if you look at that it's default material zero i'm going to rename this background and right now it's not a background but that's what we're strive for is this is going to be the background and so if i click back on rectangle zero it's going to say the material is the background material now i want to click on background all right and i need to make that material now what is it going to be next we're going to go to diffuse color and there's something called a texture I want to make this into a texture so I'm going to click the little button the little radio button here and I'm going to create a patch and that's why we had to open the patch window it's going to say okay you can you can have a background diffuse texture now now I'm going to right click within the patch editor window and a whole new list of opportunities await me and I'm going to type in value and value means that I can output the input value without changing it I'm going to insert value I'm going to right click on value and I'm going to choose the value type and I'm going to choose color so before the default was number now it's color this adds a patch that will create a color I'm going to click on this circle here and I'm going to choose a color I'm going to choose color green and there it is now it is the color green and then I'm going to connect the this is the output port value and the input port diffuse texture and now the rectangle is green I know not very exciting <laughs> that was step two all right so this will get more interesting in step three I promise all right so if you're following along step three so now I'm going to right click anywhere in the patch editor and create a transition transition is right there excellent and I want to right click on transition and make this a color transition okay perfect I'm going to right click on start and I'm going to select the color yellow all right I left click on start then I'm going to left click on end and I'm going to choose the color blue and I'm just doing this according to the tutorial you can choose whatever color you want it's your life right it's your it's it's your thing all right so start yellow and in blue and now I'm going to move this over here and this is the output port 
So I'm moving the value out of the way. So we're forgetting about value. Now we're going to, tra to, to transition. So the output port of transition and the input port of diffuse texture. All right, not very exciting. I just made the square yellow now. But what's interesting is this little progress button here. So progress is now on zero, which is the start. If I change progress to one, you see the square suddenly turn into blue. That's because it's oscillating between zero and one. So zero is the start, one is the end. And so if I do a 0.5, then I've got a semi-green because it's in between the transition. And let's say I want to choose, I, I liked 0.3 better when I worked on that. It looked a little bit more green-ish. Uh, but you see that between zero and one, it's going between yellow and blue. I'm going to right click again and I'm going to go for a loop animation. I searched for loop animation. I'm going to hit insert. Oh, and it just, it connected itself. You're actually supposed to connect the output of loop animation to the input of the transition. It changes the number between zero and one. And now you are cycling through between yellow and blue. Mine just automatically did that. Not sure why. Uh, and if you want to stop it, you can uncheck enable and it stops recheck enable and there we go and it just keeps on looping through you can change the duration how many seconds it is you can change all sorts of things to make it work for you now it's still kind of annoying because it's right in front of her face and so let's see what we can do to uh, fix that let's go back to this this is called the scene tree we're going to click on camera and we're going to go over here to the specter panel click the plus button texture extraction and it's got a camera texture. And now I'm going back to background. I'm selecting background, and then I'm gonna scroll down here to the alpha section, and I'm gonna click the checkbox next to the alpha section. So I'm enabling alpha, and then in, in texture, I'm gonna select new segmentation mask texture. Now it's kind of, trying to figure out what's going on right there. And now there's something called invert, selecting invert. It's inverting what it did before. Now I'm gonna click the rectangle and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click on fill width, fill height, and voila, it is now the background of this effect we just created. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger so you can see her now. Look at her. Look at that. All right. Excellent. So now let's, uh, let's do this on my phone again. I started the Spark AR player. This is where we left it the last time I used it. And now I'm going to hit the mirror button. It's connected. And now on my phone, I now have the changing background outside of my hair and I've got the mask going. That was lab number two. I'm at a good stopping point now. So thank you so much for watching lab number two, Spark AR. And next week we will jump right into lab number three. And in lab number three, I'm going to show you how to submit on Facebook and what you need to do to get your project publicly available. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Please subscribe. Bye now.